<laughs> Mama, we made it. <laughs> <laughs> but fuck, man. Anyway, Daylight Chris, my guy. Thank you for having us. Paco, Denny, appreciate you, doggy. Yes, Thank sir. you, guys. Yes, sir. So we're out here at uh, Crisp LA in uh, Sunnyside LA. You mm -hmm. know, owner over here, Daylight Crisp. Crisp, Carlos. introduce yourself, Carlos Los. My name fucking is know by many names. My name is Carlos Flores. The magician, the guy that makes it happen. <laughs> Hell the guy yeah. that gets you laid. Hey. <laughs> hey, low key, straight up, bro. They come to him on fucking Fridays. They feel like a new man on Monday, baby. You know what I'm talking about? When people come in with a bad attitude, I'm like, if I don't do this right, you're not going to get laid. <laughs> Hell, <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. Nah, man. thanks Hell for coming, yeah. bro. Nah, I appreciate, appreciate you it. having us, bro. Appreciate the fucking you guys. Astros just won the World Series, bro. Fuck the Astros. Fuck them. Uh, but yeah, Fuck bro, MLB any, right now. Nah, yeah. Anyway, man, thank you for having us, bro. This is a cool shop you guys got. Um, and uh, you guys are also working here as well, right? You guys yeah, all yeah. Cut, cut here? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. So tell us a little about your fucking backstory a little bit. Just where you guys are from in general. Uh, Los, I'm, are you originated from Downey? No, I'm, I'm from Paramount. Paramount? It's like 10 okay. minutes from here. And then you're, uh, Danny, you're from yeah. Downey. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah. I, I live here in Downey. Downey? Yeah. yeah. Paco? Yes. Yeah, I, I stay here in Downey. Yeah, yeah. That's cool, yeah. funny. Um, yeah, I stay in Downey. Yeah? yeah? Hell yeah. Good shit, man. Good shit. So, bro, how did how did it all fucking? Uh, I know it's kind of broad question, you know. How did it come about a little bit, Los? Uh, you, bro, you've been cutting here for a motherfucking minute, bro. You know yeah. what I mean? So, this is actually my I, second I, shop. Is it for real? real? Yeah. I, I had, know you had damn. Bro, like a, a studio or something. I had right? a well, okay, third, technically. Bro, but fuck all the Ta good shit. I want to go. A yeah, like back. Yeah, take yeah, us back. Yeah. Take us back, dude. Because I like, remember how this shit start. I, I've known I've known Los literally. I think like. Over 15 years, bro. You were still a virgin for sure. I was still a virgin for sure. <laughs> nah, low key, low key. I was like, bro, I was a lot, a lot younger than him and my cousins, bro. Like by like five, ten years. So a lot of these guys were going out doing their things, and I had to stay back home. I was only able to hang out like at the house parties or something like that. But I was barely 21 yeah. when I met everyone. Yeah, see, so I, I was. I was the youngest what, one. Like, I'm still the youngest one, obviously, but. So I was probably yeah. like 15, like 12. That's or crazy. Something. But That's yeah, take us back. But how 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 this all get going? So, yeah, he was cutting hair fucking... The shop or, like, just nah, me? Just in work general, work. you. Nah, you how'd you get shop, into all this shit? You were shit. cutting at the crib, bro. Yeah, you know? so I started when I was 13 years old, 20 years ago. That's crazy. That's crazy, bro. Time fucking flies. Yeah. And did you just randomly fucking get into the cutting? Or what? To be honest, <clears throat> I just started lining myself up. Like, at the time, cutting your own shit. when, uh, at that time, like, not a lot of barbers would do edge ups on Hispanics. You would have to go to a black barbershop to get a, a, a decent edge up. So what year was this? This was two thousand three. Like early two thousands. Yeah, early two thousands. Damn. And I started lining myself up, and I guess I got pretty good. My friends started asking me like, well, "Where do you get cut?" And I was like, "Well, I get cut here, but like I line myself I up." Do it myself. And I started doing this, you know, just lineups. I would charge two dollars a for edge up. Shit. So no cut, just the fucking... Just edge ups, boom, boom. Yeah. yeah. And then next thing you know, I was doing tapers, and then I started doing other haircuts, you know, like... <clears throat> I started with just tapers. That was the only thing I... People would ask me, give me a fade. Nah, just get a taper, you know, like... It looks, <laughs> yeah. it looks better. It's better. It looks better. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I would do, yeah. And then those friends um, started, you know... People started noticing their haircuts and started asking, and I was like, damn, like... It's gonna be a thing, I'm yeah. Good at this, yeah. And yeah, next thing I used to take like three hours on a haircut though. Like, I wasn't Damn. doing a lot of haircuts. Hell yeah. Three hours because you weren't that good yet, or I was. Yeah. I didn't know what I was doing. I was. Yeah. I was learning. Learning as while I, you go. As, as yeah, it's like I was. That's the best teacher. Moved, you know, and and then around that time, um, my mom had a lot of friends that owned barbershops, and I started sweeping at the barbershop. And yeah. then from there, I just started learning more. And just I, I'm, a, I'm a really good visual learner, so I learned from just watching people do it. And then next, you know, the guy, one of my actually, one of my friends walked in to get a haircut, and he kind of put me on the spot. He's like, "Come here," up, <laughs> just yeah, like that. Shit, yeah, really? And I was like, "What? No, it's <laughs> not how it works. Damn. I don't cut hair here." Yeah. And the owner overheard, and he was like. You cut hair? I was like, yeah. He's like, just cut them up. I'm going to lunch. 
Uh, in my head, I'm like, fuck, this is gonna take like two hours. For sure. Like, <laughs> like this was gonna, he's, he's gonna like, come back from lunch. Just do it. Do it real quick. Yeah. yeah. Like, I was like, this guy's gonna come back from lunch and I'm still gonna be here on one side, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so he went to lunch. Luckily, it took like an hour and a half and then came back and I was like almost done. And I was like, fuck, like, I wonder how it's gonna look. I, 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 I was so nervous <laughs> yeah. th- that I just like did my best That's and crazy. like, I guess it looked pretty good. That's tight. And he's like, um, maybe a chair, you know? And you're like, bad guy. Boom. And it sounded like a good idea at first, but then, like, this is a shop that used to have, like, 12 chairs. So I was making, like, 120 bucks. Imagine 2,000. So put it in like, perspective, because we don't understand. I, it, is 12 well, chairs too many, too little? or is it No, that's like, a big shop. Yeah, okay. I was going to say that's a big shop. Yeah. But imagine you're a... a 13, 14 year old making 120 bucks, 150 bucks to sweep in a day. Oh, Damn. No, you're fucking. And this is like early, 2003, yeah. 2004. Early 2000s. Jordans, baby, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> this is the beginning for sure. I didn't have shit before that. Is that all you were doing at the time though? Or did you have like a nine to five job or nothing? No, no, no. I was a kid. So my mom, she was cool. Like, go work on the weekends, yeah. you know? She, in her eyes, she's probably like, I don't have to pay for a babysitter, fuck yeah, it, you know? No, exactly. Um, and, and better it, than him hanging out with his fucking friends, too, you know what I mean? Like, right, go do some work. Right. You know? And it kind of backfired because I was making, like I said, I was making like 150 bucks. And then the following week, I was like, I got a chair now. And I did like three haircuts. And haircuts were, I think they were like five or six bucks at the time. Yeah. So I made like Damn. 20 bucks that day. I was like, Fuck. you're like, shit. I demoted myself <laughs> for less money. No. Yeah. And then they hired someone instantly and I was for to do my job. So I couldn't get my you job back. back you know? yeah. and I was like, Fuck. So I was like, I have to make it work. But luckily it worked out because little by little, I, you know, people started popping in, recognizing, recognizing me from school. And then, you know, that kind of helped me out. A lot of people didn't give me a chance because I look young. You know, I didn't have a beard. I, I look oh, like yeah. a 12 year old, bro. Bro, no, I get it. Yeah. I mean, think about it, bro. You go into a fucking shop, you're trying to get fucking fresh for the weekend, and you see this kid, you're like, ah, I'll, I'll wait another five minutes for, you know, yeah, fucking, you know yeah, 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 for, yeah, I get it, bro. For Juanita yeah. over there. Yeah. Was, hey, that's gonna, probably going to fuck you up. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, that's the funny part. This, this shop was definitely one of those shops that would get people in and out 15 minute haircuts. Damn. Not, not like, Good haircut. No, I, no, I know. It was just turn and burn. Hey, yeah, yeah. You, honestly, yeah, I, yeah. You know, and damn, it's a, it's a lot. It's a, that's twenty years. Like, yeah. a, there's a lot to say, but yeah, I went from there. I after that, I worked at one of the barbers there. Um, opened a shop. I went to work with him, and then like that didn't really work out. And then I moved to another shop, and just I think I worked at like, like I think I worked at like seven shops. Damn. Until eventually I was like, fuck, I need to do my own thing. But I couldn't afford, well, I didn't really have like a plan, game plan to like open a shop. Yeah. So I went to work at my mom's house. That's when I met you. That's when, yeah, that's yeah, when I, was I, like, I met you. Cause yeah. Los was cutting out. He's like, hey, doggy, talking to Brandon. What's up, bro? You want to cut? I'm like, yeah, dog, come to the homie Los's spot. He cuts all the homies up. And I was like, fuck. I, I think I went there one time and then I went there. There's another spot for you in L.A., but how, how was that? Yeah. Yeah, so I turned 21, and then I went to barber school. And then halfway through the program, I, I got offered. Well, actually, I applied for it, but, like, there was a shop, like a high-end barber shop in West Hollywood. And they hired me knowing I didn't have a license. And I thought that was cool, you know? Hell yeah. But I was committed. Under the I was, table shit, baby, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I was committed because I, I always wanted to, this shop was originally based in New York. And, like, I always, my like, my goal was to work there, you know? And um, they opened a shop in L.A., so I was like, Psh, that's it. I'm going to make the move. Yeah. And I worked there for, like, four years. Got a lot of clientele. And then also along the way, like, I stayed in the hood. Like, I was working part-time there and part-time in Paramount. Yeah. So I was working three days a week there and four. So I was working basically every day. Yeah. Until like I, I got tired of it. I was like, damn, like I can't be doing this. It's too much. So then um, my one of my coworkers opened a. He wanted to open a studio and he asked me if I wanted to 
join in, you know. Um, I was kind of scared at first, so I, I didn't jump. I didn't jump in right away, so I let him do it on his own. Well, he he. It's not he that did, I let him. Yeah, he no, just he, he, he did, did it anyway, did you know. Okay, yeah. I mean, once I seen him do it, I was like, damn, like this could work. Like I should just give it a chance, you know. So then, um, yeah. So then I uh, I tried it out and it worked out. Like, bro, what's the name of that shop you're working at in L.A.? Uh, Frank Shop Shop. Frank Shop Shop. Yeah, man, bro. Dog, you had, you had some crazy fucking clientele coming through there, bro. You're yeah. Some cool shit, man. For cool that people. shop. Yeah. Honestly, like the owners brought in like a decent amount of clientele, but I want to say like us, like the the barbers. The barbers, we got the name. We we were able to like really like set the tone. I don't know how, like, yeah, from just everybody had pole. different yeah. stories. It was, like, Instagram. Yeah. Like, yeah, a friend from, of a friend. Yeah, from Frank's Shop Shop, I remember the fucking, the only image I remember from that is the flame haircut. I don't even know who the fuck it was or what it was, but I just, I always remember that. He had, he had a flame backdrop, and you did, like, a flame thing on some dude on the fucking back of the head. Oh, but yeah. I remember that, but I don't remember who it was. Yeah, it looked yeah. fucking dope. There's a lot. Of, yeah. Honestly, that, that shop was dope. Um, there's a lot of, uh, you kind of see some of the DNA, like, in the structure of this shop. That I, I don't want to say I stole, but like things I like from that from that shop. Yeah. And I try to integrate here. It's got the inspiration. Yeah. You know. For sure. I'm not gonna say like I'm not gonna be a hater. And be like, oh, I didn't, learn, I didn't pick no, anything bro, up. You, you always know? pick up different. For sure. From different fucking places. You know, to your upbringing, to where you're at right now. It's just right. human nature. You know, you yeah, pick yeah, that shit from yeah. anywhere. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And then, um, but yeah, th that studio was in Beverly Hills and. It was dope because it was like a private setting, kind of like this. That's why I, I kind of wanted to set yeah. like something similar here. Um, and me and my boy, like honestly, we had like some big people coming through that through that spot. Sometimes like, we would sit. Well, I mean, at least for me, I know I would, I would sit down in, in the, the studio or the studio. Yeah, yeah. it's a private studio. Just picture like yeah. like a uh, office. Yeah, li literally. You know, yeah, yeah. It was big enough for one chair, shampoo, and like a couple chairs to wait. The TV, but people loved it, and I, I think that's what kind of like attracted people to, to go there because yeah. it was like private. You don't have to worry about like running into people and you shit. Just get there, get and you, like it's funny, dog. Like as a guy, you know, getting a cut on a weekend or something, you like worry about like running into your homies or something at the barber yeah, shop yeah, yeah. or yeah. running into other fucking people and like, damn, I'm just trying to go get a cut. You're all fucking. Now you gotta you make know? small talk with the guy. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> that's that's that, well, I mean, we see that over here a like. lot. Yeah. <laughs> but it's also kind of cool. It's also kind of cool when you see, like, longtime friends yeah. like, run into each other. But I hope Brian for sure. ten years. I know when they start catching up, and you're just cutting your hair, and you see, you hear them catching up. Yeah. yeah. And then you just, from a barber's perspective, perspective, it's uh, yeah, it's cool to see that. It's cool to see that because um, you just reignited a friendship that they, that they yeah. have. You know, all of a sudden, like, you're at the shop, random. You see your homie from high school, you're like, yeah. oh, shit. And, yeah. you know, that could turn into something. Who knows? No, it's a, it's a big relationship, dog. Like, yeah. getting a cut with just, like, your boys and stuff like that. Yeah, so, yeah. So, it's, like, something, like, maybe certain, you know, cultures or something don't understand. But, you know, I, I totally get that. You going in there, it's, like, a, a, a kind of a bonding thing. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe because no, not everyone goes to a barbershop, you know, like, right. kind of, you know, our, our culture does. But um, just doing that and fucking going in there and you're chopping up with your boys and you're talking about what you're going to do and like, you know, like, what are you going to cut for? Like, it's fucking, it's cool, yeah, yeah. bro. It's like, it's such a different setting, you know? Yeah. So you were saying though, uh, Thank you. at first you were kind of like, you had the vision, you just didn't know how to execute it. That's what it kind of sounded like at first. Right. Like, take us through that. So you you mean for this, right? Yeah. Like the, the build up to it. Okay, you were so like, Hey, I want to do it on my own, but so what you kind of don't like, know where to go or whatever. Like, what happened where you were just like? What click was, I think, was um. I would compare it to like how like the like like the whole like uh, housing like the market right now, right? Like, people want to buy homes. People are scared to do it because you know the interest, you know all the risks. And shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but people know that there's a time that's there's gonna come a time where it's gonna be you're gonna have to pull the trigger right and you have to find the mean in between like where you're scared but you also don't want to wait too long and then there's nothing for you to buy you straight know straight up so you know originally i wanted to do this four years ago before covid started and then we got hit with all this stuff and i had to pause everything yeah and 
as we were coming to the end of the pandemic, I was like, all right, I need to start planning because, you know, there's a lot of uh, real estate available, but who knows for how long, right? So you, I can't really say I was 100% sure and like ready, but I was like, if I wait too long, I might not be able to get the location I want. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like you just I took the risk. I took the risk, you know, and it worked out. Hell yeah. The shop's dope. Yeah. I mean, thank you. Um, I, It's not 100% like how I envision it being, but it's like like 80%. And I'm happy yeah. with that, you know, because like you shoot for the stars, you know, you might land on the moon. Like, yeah. you know. How Boom. That, yeah. Um, I would have wanted a lot of things for it, but it didn't really happen. But I'm happy with it, you know. Um, leading up to and some that's yours too. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I, trust me, when people come in, they're like, "Oh shit, this shop's dope," you know. And in my head, <clears throat> I feel like first of all, I'm like, "Thank you," but then I feel like. If only they could see what I really wanted to do. Yeah, you know? Your own biggest critique. Yeah, sure. exactly. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of things that, that bug me. And, you know, these guys sometimes, they look at me and they're like, what's wrong? Why are you stressing out? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, there's things Your that like. Your mind's always I, racing. Yeah, bro. Like, that's, it's always like that, you know. So I don't think I'm ever going to be done. I'm already thinking about, like, opening another shop. I haven't really told a lot of people, but, Hell yeah. you know, like, might be like. Three months from now, I'm like, all right, let's do it. You know? yeah. how, how do you think you're going to be able to do that without you being at both shops? What do you think you're going to be able to kind of I'm going to have to be at both shops you know? at some point of the week. So, like, I would have to probably probably split time, yeah. you know? So how do you find cats like these to come in and, and help you build what you're trying to build? That's crazy, man. Like, I want to say it was an accident. It was an accident. Tell us, tell us. Uh, what, what? So basically, so how, how'd you guys meet? How'd you I, guys meet? Well, it's a long story, but basically, long story short, what's <clears> up? The, a girl came in. Always a girl. Hey. <laughs> and she was, um, okay. She she brought someone else in that. So she came in. Sorry, she came in and she loved the spot, but it didn't work out for her. She actually ended up working. A few doors down. She was cutting hair too? She's a barber, okay. yeah. She's not a hairstylist. She's an actual right. barber. Um, it didn't work out for her. And she introduced me to someone else, one of their friends. And he was like, I'm in, you know, like, just give me a couple months. And then the mix of it, he brought this guy. It was like a domino effect. Yeah. So he before you had the shop, you, d you didn't know who you were going to bring in here yet? No, no, no. no. Yeah. You were just like... I was hopeful. As far as I know, I can pay the bills with my own kind of book a network and then yeah. bring on other people that can help supplement that. Yeah, exactly. Like, um, man, it was. Yeah. So how how you guys fucking how you guys meet him? So oh, through yeah. that through that guy. Yeah. So so the the girl brought a dude and he introduced me to this guy. Yeah. And then they both introduced me to him. And you guys were cutting hair at another spot. At another spot, yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I get. So, what I was going to say, sorry. What I was going to say was my whole plan, the only plan I had was to build something dope that would attract people just from the looks. The you know what I'm saying? The aesthetic, right? yeah. And, dude, you do a really fucking good job at that, yeah. honestly, bro. Like, Straight up. You're yeah. fucking yeah. the crisp shit. You're fucking. Bring that shirt over here, uh, uh, that one in the back. Dog, that sim simplistic of a fucking logo, like it looks fucking clean. You got that shit on fucking hats, like you know, shirts and stuff like that. And I'm like, dude, yeah, it, it's definitely like that visual uh, appeal that people right. want to fucking go and hang out at. You know what I mean? It might I, not be. I think that's the biggest thing I inherited from Frank's Chop Shop was that because that's what attracted me to them was they used, there was a there was the only barber related brand that had a, a partnership with New Era. And this is when, like, people wouldn't wear snapbacks. Like, snapbacks right. weren't back yet. Like, yeah. you know, it was just strictly fitted. And I was like, I need to buy something that, like, I'm a barber. You know, I want something barber-related. Like, I could wear every day. Yeah. And then I would say that's the biggest thing I inherited from them. Inherited from them was that and, like, also branding. Like, you know, make, making sure that people know your brand outside of haircuts. And isn't that so big now, bro, with social media? 100%. Like, 
right? It's crazy. Brand branding? Everything. Bro. <laughs> like, Marketing, branding. Yeah. For sure. What was like a big inspiration to you to get all this shit started? A big inspiration? Um, Person, something in your bloodstream. Honestly, like, my mom's like very old school. Like, I, don't, I, I can't say that anybody in my family is like, like me, I think, um, I want to say I have good taste, but like that you don't really, you can't really, I don't know if you inherit that. Like, do you? You can, you can, you can, yeah. you can, you can learn it. Yeah. Well, I don't think anybody in my family really has good taste. <laughs> that's fucked up. But that's swag. That's not, there's nothing hey, wrong with that. You they're learn just, it. They're traditional, like old school, like, yeah. you know, like, like exactly. they don't care. Like my mom wouldn't care about this cup. Right. She'd be but like, you, just give me a cup. Yeah. You know, but I'm like, let me put a little logo on it. You know, if somebody wants to post it on Instagram, you know, they yeah, can. It's a talk up with the fucking. Yeah. You know, yeah. like I care about stuff like that. I don't, I don't know why it just. Attention to detail. Yeah. I just, I've always been like that, you know? So you've always had like the visual kind of mindset of it. Yeah. Is what it sounds like. Hell yeah. No, and I've always given him props for that shit, bro. He's got motherfucking, he tries to swag the fuck out, bro. I oh, know, shit. Look at him. <laughs> He's always got the sharpest face. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. Nah, I'm playing with him. You feel me? dog, yeah, I give him that, you know? So when it comes to fucking, you know, putting that nice cut on someone else, I know he fucking takes the time and puts the detail into making that shit look good, too. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's what makes his craft fucking dope, you know? And Thank yeah, you. Hell yeah. Appreciate that. That's dope, bro. For sure, man. So these two guys, yeah. what's it like uh, working here? Tell us a little bit about your two selves and, and what that's all about. Mike uh, no, yeah. Honestly, bro, like um, I'm, I'm pretty new to the barber game. I've only been cutting hair for probably like, I want to say like, like two years. Yeah, two okay. years. Two years, like, and one month now. Started in September, right before the pandemic. I think it was 2020. Yeah. Um, so I haven't been to a lot of shops. I've been to three shops. But the, the the whole thing that attracted me to this shop was exactly what he had envisioned, which is, was the aesthetics. You know, yeah. like when they when um, when they showed me the shop, because I didn't even know about the shop yet, and they're like, "Oh, like check out this spot." And so I looked at it. All right, bro, this is this is nice. This is yeah. this is different. This isn't. I I walked. I obviously as a as a guy, right? You go go into different barbershops. So I've seen different barbershops. Right. I've never seen one like this. You know. So when I saw it, I'm like, yeah, that's where I gotta go. Um. So working in a shop like this, the the vibe with the guys is dope. First of all, second of all, every client that comes in is like, oh, this is a real dope shop. You know. Um. And even though we're all booked, we still get people coming in through the door. You get me? Which is kind of hard, I feel like, in a barbershop that's all booked because it's like, you look at that spot, you're like, oh, they're all booked, but I can't go in there. People can still come in just because they see the spot from the outside, you know, it still attracts them. Like, Let me see yeah. what's up. Um, so, yeah, from a barber perspective, working here is completely legit to me, though. Was what what were you doing dope. before, bro? Uh, so I did a lot of I did a lot of retail, bro. Yeah. Um, I started cutting, like, the very first time I picked up a pair of clippers, I was in high school. I want to say, like, 15, 16. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it wasn't even like to cut other people up, bro. It was the same thing as him, bro. Just, just trying to get myself fresh up. up. Yeah. I didn't have money to get That's a haircut, crazy. <laughs> but everybody in school was like yeah. fresh to the to the toes, you know. So I got to figure like, it out. I don't got I don't got money to buy clothes. I don't got money to get a haircut, but I could figure something out. So I bought a pair of clippers and just started taping myself up, bro. It was terrible at first, bro. Terrible, bro. <laughs> you living and I learn. I taping myself up. I love that I shit. I brought my line like all the way up to the hell line, yeah. Like, you know, like it was bad, bro. Hell yeah. um, but. A couple of homies wanted me to cut them up and whatever, but I so I did that for like maybe like a year and a half. Yeah. Um, but at the time, to me, I was like, oh, like, like nobody's gonna take me serious. I didn't know about the profession like that, you know. So I'm like, this isn't like something that I want to do. Right. So I just put it down. Um, then went through my whole like retail experience. I did a, a couple um, retail management positions, and then my last my last job, I was working at Red Bull Monday through Friday, so I could cut on the weekends. And I was there for like maybe three months, and then I I quit and just went full time. Just full fucking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hell yeah. That's dope, bro. Yeah, I took the risk, dog. I think it was perfect timing too because the pandemic happened. Everybody was looking for a barber. Oh, dog. Straight up. Everybody was looking for a barber, bro. For like, real. I had people hitting me up that I hadn't cut in like five years. Hey, bro, you still cutting hair? I'm like, what the fuck, where you? Where, That's where crazy, you been, bro? During the pandemic. 
People were tell me, bro. Thirsty. I was getting cuts <laughs> and fucking motherfuckers. Like I didn't even know these guys. Like I, they cut me a couple times, uh, and I was getting cuts in their garages, like in their fucking like living room. Like, yeah, because you, you were, couldn't get a cut. You know what I mean? Like if you were a legitimate, <laughs> legitimate barber, you couldn't find clippers because everybody at home were were everybody was buying clippers. Yep. Yeah. People are reselling clippers. So everything was out of stock for you guys. Though. Yes. Uh, yeah. You couldn't, crazy. couldn't find anything. <laughs> that was a fucking crazy time, dog. I remember that shit. Yeah. I paid double the price for fucking haircuts. Dog. Just Straight being in up. someone's fucking living room. I remember that. Yeah. That's crazy, it, it, dog. It hurt my business, but it also helped me boost my prices after yep. the pandemic. People were used to the inflated prices a little bit? Well, they got used to it, yeah. Because I was charging basically, I was charging what I charged here. Don't tell nobody. I don't. I don't, I don't want these. Don't dudes. tell nobody. No, no numbers. We <laughs> don't right, talk don't, numbers. Don't tell nobody, guys. <laughs> Come to the shop. You'll find don't out. Tell no. no, you ain't gotta talk numbers. You can talk percentages. You no, know? Yeah. I, I'm not scared to say it. But like, basically, like any clients that I charge what I charge now, new client, they're like, you were charging that for a house call? Like that's crazy. But I, I didn't have a place to work, and I needed to make money. And you know, I had an apartment, a car. Like I wasn't gonna default. There's a lot. There's a lot of programs going going around that you could default on like rent and pay yep. it back. Yeah. I was like, I, I'm not gonna do that because who knows? They might you know pardon it, but like, who, like what if they don't? And I'm just behind on eight months of rent or, or whatever, you know? Straight up. So I was I need, I need to make it work. So I was like driving around. I was working like 7 a.m. to like 11 p.m. midnight sometimes. Sheesh. That's Brandon. I was going to his crib to cut him and his stepdad. Fuck those motherfuckers. That's crazy. For the, for, <laughs> for the price of a haircut, you, Dude, what I charge here. Yeah. yeah. I was doing the same exact thing. Though. That's crazy. Like during, the, uh, during, during that time, bro, I had just gotten into cutting hair, bro. And I'm like, fuck, I need to transition. To, uh, after I like, I did all the, all the math in my head and I actually started liking the craft, I'm like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm like, I need a transition, bro, but we're in a fucking pandemic now. So I can't work how at a shop. Do it? Yeah. So how am I do it? Dog, I went on a four-hour walk, literally around the whole city, like as much as I could, right around the neighborhood and whatever. Passed out hella business cards. I was doing house calls, dog, and this is like, I don't, you guys, you guys can put this on. I was doing house calls for like twenty-five bucks, thirty bucks, because I was still starting, bro. You know, so I'm, I'm like, I can't charge for. And bro, come that's up. still twenty-five, thirty bucks just straight to your yeah. pocket. Straight you know to mean? my pocket. You, you, you got I'm no st- overhead. You know, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm still driving. But you're I'll hustling. Take, I'll take you know, it, bro. Like, yeah. Um, but bro, you like, get, you get four or five of those a day. Yeah, 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 it's something, it's something, you know? Uh-huh, you know? For yeah. me, it was more of like, let me, I, I don't care how much I charge you guys, you guys can pay me what you want I, after, like, you, like that's the base price, right? But the for me, it was just getting the, one, getting the reps in so I yep. could get better. Two, Straight up. was getting some sort of clientele, dog. Yep. I could move to a shop down the street and they might follow me, you know, once shit opens up again, so who knows? Um, but yeah, yeah, it was, a, it was a tricky time. It was like, either you let that shit break you or... You took advantage of whatever you could take a, take advantage yeah, of. For 100%. real. What about you, Paco? What started, do you think, big dog? I started cutting hair during the quarantine as well. Did you really? Yeah. So you've only been cutting about, for like a year and a half or two? But I, no, I hadn't been cutting before. I was going to school and then... Like, before. When, every, when's the first time you get someone to cut? Or you yourself a cutter? What, what, no, like, I, was, how did it come I was, about? I was in middle school and I was cutting on my little brothers, bro. Hey. Just, yeah. just to see what's up. Yeah. But I was, was... To me, it was more like... Like, I just want to try crazy haircuts on people. Yeah. I wasn't giving fades. I would do, like, a one or a two on the side. It was, like, a hobby at first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then just laugh because my little brother was two years old walking around with a mohawk. <laughs> yeah. my ass chewed, you know? Like, Hell, yeah. And then, um... Paco, que si este? I was just running, bro. Like, um, I like cutting hair, bro, but I never saw it as a business. So I would go get a haircut, and I was like... I would do the math, bro. I was like, how many haircuts is he doing a day? Like, is he making enough money? Like, 20 bucks, but he has to pay rent, he has to pay for the machines. Like, it's probably not worth it, you know? Right. And so I got it, like, he did. I got a, I got a regular job at a, just doing maintenance, bro. Just right. Yeah, sacrificing yeah. my life for no, nothing, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's not paying off. They didn't want to give me 401k, you know, the stuff that they promised you. Right. And I got tired of it, bro. And I used to get my hair cut by a barber. He became pretty big. And I asked him, bro, I was like, yo, like, is this worth it? And he goes, like, yeah, like, it's. It's good. And then he introduced me to the old barbershop that I used to work at, to the owner. And I was talking to him, and he just, he goes, do it. I didn't hesitate, bro. The next day, I was already out of school, like, like learning how to cut Hell hair. Hell yeah. Bro. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and then the quarantine uh, shut us down. 
And I, I enjoyed it, but I was burned out. I was doing 40 hours a week, going to school at night, editing videos. Uh, whatever I could do, I'm, like I was doing it, and I burned out. So when the, they shut us down, I was enjoying it. I was like, bro, I'm relaxing. Yeah, a little bit of break. Yeah. And then I just started going crazy, bro. I'm like, what am I going to do now? That's when my friends are here. Can you cut me out? Can you cut me out? And I started charging. I was just happy people were letting me cut their hair. So I was charging 20, 25. And just going to people's houses, cutting up, cutting up, cutting up. Having a good time doing it. Actually, well, I wasn't even having a good time. No, that no. was just the, <laughs> because, <laughs> because because tell us, hey, no, be straight up. up. Bro, I'm yeah. getting paid and I'm cutting hair. Yeah. yeah, but I'm a tall dude, bro, and Damn, people ask you to yeah. like cut like in a small chair. So I'm bending so over, yeah. 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 you know, yeah. you're like one of the things, dog. <laughs> yeah, bro, yeah. what what is it? What? Uh, yeah, when it, when it comes when it comes to house calls, bro, it's like you never know what kind of circumstance you're gonna be in, dog. <laughs> I've been in a house call, have my clippers die, and they didn't have anywhere for me to charge it. I've been in that bitch like dark. So that's as fuck, why you motherfuckers bro. charge hundred plus for these motherfucking house <laughs> calls, huh? Dog, yeah, it's, it's rough when you get in there, bro. I've, I've, yeah, it's, I've had some weird, weird situations too, dog. Yeah. Where I'm like, man, twenty bucks right now is not yeah, it, dog. Yeah, it's I, not I did a haircut, bro, with my phone out and cutting hair like this. Because yeah, right. yeah. I had no light. Yeah. 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 But. <laughs> bro, my back is hurting. You know? I'm Shit still learning, so I'm doing like, like he said, like hour haircuts. You know, like an hour like, fucking hunch hunched over, over, hunched yeah. over, bro. Like sweating. That's you know, bad, just bro. dog, bro. One of <laughs> my favorite memory of a house call. I went to um, favorite. Or no, my worst? huh? No, my, my favorite now or like. Like, like the worst, but the funniest. So it's my favorite now. <laughs> Dog, I went to go cut up uh, these twins up in this uh, in in a city nearby Pasadena, and um, island they, boys. <laughs> <laughs> they were, um, they, you know, they had a, they had a pretty fat crib, um, and outside they had a pool and whatever. And um, uh, the moms didn't want me to cut inside because she didn't want me to get hair on the floor. Oh. <laughs> Dog, this is the middle of summer, bro. It's 95 oh, degrees outside, so bro. And I'm still learning too, bro. Oh. I was out fucking sweating for like, I want to say like three and a half hours, bro. Damn. Two people, three and a half hours. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. I was, Shit. bro, my, 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 for, my forehead's dripping on, like. full on tan, huh? Bro, man. Dog, I felt like Eminem, bro. Knees weak, I'm just sweaty. <laughs> but that's crazy. All of you kind of, like, listening to all that, you all three had said kind of the same thing. Similar story. In terms of the pandemic kind of forced you yeah. to put in that hustle yeah. to go for what you want. Yeah in kind of different aspects, but it all came to the same, yeah. same thing. I think what, so, what, what brought me to it um, during, like before the pandemic was that I just needed extra bread, bro. I just needed extra bread. So it wasn't even something that at that point I still wasn't like, yeah, I love cutting hair because I hadn't tried it yet. I just knew that I did it before, you know? So I'm like, I need extra bread, bro. And my homie was talking to me. He's like, oh yeah, yeah so-and-so started cutting hair. He taught himself how to do it. Now he's cutting hair from, I'm like, bro, I can do that. So, um, that's what that's what pushed me into it, and then once the pandemic hit, I'm like, I got I got to get in my bag right now. I don't know what it is, but yeah. I got more time now that I'm still getting paid for for my actual job. Let me double dip this bitch. Like, let me you know let me get in my bag. Yeah. So um, that's what like really pushed me. And then I got into some shit with like I had totaled my car and all types of shit, right? And um, so I I really needed extra bread. So I'm like, oh, I got I got to step on it now. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, that pandemic was a blessing in disguise, bro. For yeah. sure. Yeah, I think the, I see the pandemic as like, life being like handing me handing it to me. You know yeah. what I mean? Because people needed cuts, yeah. and no one really cared like what type of cuts they were getting as long as you know they felt clean. I mean, yeah. No one really cared. yeah so bro, I, was I was paying some chinita cuts. I swear to God, yeah. bro. They, they yeah. were they were like not supposed to be open. I was paying fucking fifteen twenty bucks for like yeah. some little. Bro, I didn't get a cut yeah. for probably like. Three four months, bro. <laughs> bro, <don't laughs> at, at the first, when bro, I started, and I get cut, yeah. and I was week, like, bro. ah, yeah. fuck it, bro. When I started coming, when I started like working at the other barbershop, and kids were coming in, and they didn't get a haircut for like a year, bro. And it was just helmets. Yep. And you're just like, up. what's going on here, dude? Like, <laughs> and it makes you think, all right, cool. I need to create this shape on this head. I did piojos. Yeah, bro, I was so scared most of the time. <laughs> Something's going to pop out yeah. of here. <laughs> but I think the pandemic was just, it, I see it as like luck, bro, because yeah. it just allowed me to get, to cut as many people as, like as a I could, so I can learn to, be, to get to a point where like, I could charge what we charge now, you know? Straight up. Hell yeah. What was it for you? 
I think the pa- pandemic either made you a hustler or a lazy fuck. Yeah. Make you or there break you? No, there's no gray the, areas. They got the, the PPP, the birds, fucking stimulus, shit, and all that shit. So you became dependent or you figured it out, like you yeah. said. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. man, think about how many businesses. I think the pandemic, like, sped a lot of stuff up in business. Like, think about how many things boomed during the pandemic. Yeah. You know, things being created in America, made in America. Fuck, you know, OnlyFans, like, sh- shit like that. Uber, people Uber, Uber people, Uber, were, yeah, yeah. Yeah. people were lonely at home. They're just trying to get their groove on, you know? Like, I got your OnlyFans. Hell yeah. yeah. That's just that started, shit was booming, too? It, it, it was booming. real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I got three. Nah. <laughs> 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 no, yeah, My, sure. The content creator or <laughs> user? Nah. I just want to see some videos, bro. <laughs> <laughs> No, but it's true though. Like that shit, for it real. really like sped up a lot of stuff. And like for me, it just made me like something turned on. I just like I'm hungry, you know. Like literally, like how am I? I was unsure of what was gonna happen, and I was like, I gotta hustle, you know. Like like I said, I was working so you, crazy you stopped, hours. You stopped doing the studio for a little bit. So that, Cause yeah, I that, you were doing like you went to you were doing your own thing. Working Paramount, and then you went to Frank Chop Shop, and then you started doing the studio for a little bit, and then did so you pa- stop doing the studio. The, the, in pan- the pandemic um, started. Uh, I was at the studio. Yeah, I was at the studio. While the pandemic was going. Yeah, on. Okay. and we were in Beverly Hills, like, um, what do you call it? Miracle Mile, like, old money, like, hella, like, rich nice. old people. Yeah. So, no, it, w- it was nice, but because of that, those were the first people that got spooked. So, they shut everything down with no return. We had to pay rent. We didn't know what was going to happen. And then Downey was the same thing. Downey, a lot of people don't know, but Downey, California is like a really lucrative city. Like, there's don't a lot of... Kanye uh, right now. Watch what you say, bro. There's, <laughs> there's a lot of rich people over here, you know? Like, I'm talking about, like, I'm not talking about, like, listen... I know. No, I'm I know not, what you're talking about. I I'm know not, I'm not we get like, you. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna say yeah. like Jewish people, people, but with but, money <laughs> money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but and I just did right. But there's a lot of Latinos, you're rich getting, Latinos here. Bro. <laughs> 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 a lot of rich Latinos here, and uh, which is why I I always, you know, I grew up in Paramount. I would always be here. All my home just going up. Or parents were breaded, you know. So I was like, I need I need to open something in Downey. And then, to be honest with you, um, I tried to open this in Paramount, but they didn't show me any love. Like, the first of all, the like locations were run down. Um, they were asking you for this, that, and third, like, hella down payments. Like, I was like, bro, what the hell? Like, I'm really going to come out of pocket just to sign a lease, like $20,000 yeah. yeah. like for, for a barbershop? I was like, hell no, you guys are wilding. So then I seen this spot. And um, uh, to be honest with you, I was eyeing it for a long time. And then as soon as the fur lease sign went up, I was probably um, one of the first people that hit him up. Yeah. yeah. And um, there was actually a couple people that I didn't know at the time, but we know now that we're actually trying to get this spot, the same spot. The lady down, like two doors down, wanted this spot too. And what happened? I, I beat them to it. <clears throat> Is this the first car or what? I I was I was I was honestly the first person, yeah. and um, somewhere along the lines, my application got lost, or I don't know what the fuck happened. But um, I called one day, and they're like, "Oh, we already have people lined up for it." And I was like, "What do you mean? I've been waiting for this spot for like two months." And then they f- they figured out that it was somebody in their in their office went on vacation, came back, and then they quit, and they didn't let me know what was going on. But I, I had a, I had got approved yeah. already. I didn't even know. So luckily they they honored it and you know here we are. That's crazy, bro. That's fucking fate. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you're already approved. You don't even know. You call back, see what's going on. That always happens to me yeah. though. Like it's crazy. Like when when I first moved out to downtown LA. Same thing. The person, the leasing office manager, he took off on vacation and he, he didn't let me know that that I had got approved. So I'm just like here waiting. You know, it's my first time moving out. I'm like damn. I didn't approve. I, I was like, "Damn, I'm, I'm gonna have to stay with my mom for five more years." Damn. I was like, "I thought my credit was yeah, solid." Yeah, like, you know? I thought I was doing good, bro. Yeah. What the fuck? 
And then I call and I was like, you know, what's up? Like, what's going on? Yeah. They're like, oh, you got to prove you didn't get a call. I was like, no, this is why I'm calling you guys. And yeah, I, I guess this happens to me, you know. That's cool. It came to yeah. life, bro. Yeah. yeah. Do you have anyone help you with all this shit? You said, like, you're a very visual person. Honestly, I, I design most of it myself. Where do you get your, a lot yeah. of your inflation from? Inflation. In- <laughs> <laughs> inflation cut, <laughs> cut. inflation uh, where do you, you're like, you're like, inspiration influence, inspiration influences you know and stuff like that uh so very brief story uh when i graduated from high school um i was already i was pretty solid at cutting hair i had a lot of clients out but i was like I, i'm not gonna make money off this right so i went to school and i was my major was architecture i was trying to be an architect and I always had love for it, but I think, um, so my, basically my parents got divorced when I was born and he, I didn't know this, but he was a very successful architect in Mexico. And I think because of that, because he pretty much dipped out on us, I kind of like resented the idea of being an architect. So going back to that a little bit. Yeah. So I was that, like, ah, yeah. oh, fuck, I'm gonna be like this guy. Yeah. You know, it's it's crazy, bro. Yeah. Right. So like, yeah, I stopped yeah. doing that, and I, I was like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna just keep, I'm gonna just continue cutting hair." Do whatever I gotta do. Yeah, it's kind of stupid, right? Like you just no, give give up I on mean, something. But I didn't know this until now. Like I, I'm an adult, and I can admit it. Like it's dumb, but I kind of had a reason, right? Like I re- valid, I resented child, this person yeah. that that left us, you know. Yeah. So I stopped doing it. But I always had love for architecture. A lot of for modern stuff, you know, like furniture. I still want to do furniture. That's that's probably one of the things I'm gonna do in the next couple of years. Design furniture. That's Hell yeah, bro. interior yeah. design and all that. Interior, it's hard. Man. Not not interior design, but actual furniture. Like just okay. sell pieces. Like Damn. maybe like one of ones, like stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I see that a lot in fucking your shop here. Like little pieces like that. They like even like knickknacks from different things, and it looks fucking cool, man. Yeah. I, I I respect that so much. I wish I I wish I had that. I don't have that like artistic mind like that to make everything visual and that's dope bro i'm jealous of that that's fucking badass and that's all, all something i've always fucking you know every time i think of los i think of fucking dope looking shit you know what i mean whether it's an outfit whether it's a fucking logo whether it's fucking you post fucking random you know bar stools or whatever i'm like it's just all visually appealing you know what i mean and i respect that it's dope yeah and I think that all comes into fruition to what you're doing right now with your haircuts and stuff like that. The people you bring in, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's fucking, it's respectable, bro. I like that. That's dope, man. To be honest, like, I feel like it's not just here, like, in general, like, we only live, I hate to use a YOLO, you know, Drake shit, but you only <laughs> live true. once, right? But literally, like, why wouldn't you want to, like, live the best life? Why wouldn't you want to work? at the bed i actually post when i was i was going through it for a couple months because i didn't have any barbers so this guy started in july so i was what was it september january February, March, april, like seven or eight months in no barbers just me i was paying the rent by myself here by yourself by myself yeah. working crazy hours you know like had no personal no life basically outside of the barber shop the shop wasn't even done like it's still not done there's a couple of things i need to do but um but yeah, I was like stressed out, struggling. I was like, fuck, like, why wouldn't you want to work here? It's just dope. Yeah, like, you know, what the yeah. fuck? Like, I'll go to my friend's shop to get haircuts, and I'm like, man, like. It's just black as fuck, bro. Come yeah, like, come over here, I'll come to my shop, and I'll just be happy. And then I'm like, all right, yeah. fuck it, get to work, you know? But I'll go to them, and they'll be booming, and I'm like, damn, like, people don't, like, like, it's, it's dope. I'm happy. People, it's also people cutting at the shops, too, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah like, I'm happy for them at the same time, but, like, I was like. I didn't want to just be like, yo, come check out my shop. It's doper, right. you know? Like, yeah. But I, in my head, I, I did go through struggles, and I, I was like, man, like, I thought I did good, you know? And then I, it, you kind of question yourself a lot when you're, not, when you're doing bad, you know? Yeah. And eventually, you know, I was like, the way it played out, I knew, like, that's how I, like, envisioned it origin- from the beginning, but I questioned myself along the way. You know, it's like month one, you're like very optimistic. You're like, all right, it's just dope. It feels good. I just got a new spot. Yeah, like yeah. in no time, I'm going to have people in here, you know, like it's a matter of time. Like it's going to happen. And, you, you know, and then it's quiet for a long time. And you're just like, damn, 
fuck did I do? You know, I just invested all my money in this. And I'm every dollar I make is going back into the business, you know? And and then or originally I was like, it's gonna be like a domino effect, you know, one person to come in and then the next person and then that person's gonna bring someone else and you know, or like yeah. something like that. That's how I envisioned it. Yeah, the way I've seen it is like it comes in waves, bro. And you, you get better at riding these waves. So at first it's like a small wave that comes at you, you learn how to ride it. A bigger wave comes at you, you're at a different level, you learn how to ride it. Right. A bigger wave comes at you, you learn how to ride it. And you just slowly start getting better at these fucking catching these waves. Yeah. And that's the way I see that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. It's so that, that, that's really how it happened though. Like yeah. like I said, like the David brought this guy, and that that's like a domino effect already. And then this guy brought the next guy, you know, like, yeah. and then the last guy brought me, the, you know, second to last guy brought me the last guy, that, which is Josue. And like, um, now we have a full house, you know? What's that? Yeah, we're gonna say, my bad. No, you're good. Um, yeah, going back to that, where like you, you ride different waves. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, I can relate. To, I mean, I'm sure everybody in the room could relate to that, like exactly. super heavy. But um, yeah, I think, I think one of those things also is all of us, right? Like we all went through something that we were like, fuck, like, I don't know if I should do this right now, but I'm, I'm fucking, I'm gonna do it anyways. And I'm not right. sure what the outcome is, but we're gonna find out. Right. I think once you take that, like that first time, that very first time that you ever did that, it builds some sort of confidence in you. Right. Like, oh, well, I got right. over that shit. So I was able to do that. This is yeah, like, exactly. I could do this. I know that I could do this because I already built that confidence from the past. So I definitely, yeah, it's like a different wave every time. It's more confidence each time to do bigger shit. Just keep yeah. on going and you, the bigger wave comes at you, you're getting knocked out again, but you know to fucking get up and you, you'll figure it out. And then it happens again yeah. and you, you'll figure 100%. it out. And it's just like, that's just growth, bro, in general, yeah. you know? And the thing is that after you get hit after a couple waves, you're like, I know I can get up. And that's where the confidence comes in, you know, and all right, cool. What's next? I'll figure out a way. It might be hard for a couple of days, a couple of months, but I'm gonna figure it out. And that confidence that you get at that point, it's what's gonna lead you to the next step, to the next step. To keep on. And yep. Eventually it's gonna oh, lead you to yeah. success. Yeah. And it, that's what I like about this industry, in, industry the most. It's just, I came in, Bro, I was a nervous wreck. I would cut hair. I'd start sweating, bro, because I was like, I'm going to fuck up this person's head, and they're going to pay it. me. Yeah. You know what I mean? I still sweat, bro. I still sweat. Not because it's hot. Hey, dog, I sweat all yeah, the motherfucking bro. time, bro. Let, so it, let it hit 74 degrees. Oh, I'm man. sweating. Uh, it's funny, but, man. Shout out to you, you that make funny for me sweating. You know who you're talking about. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> but this industry, uh, it teaches you to trust the process, bro. Yeah. It's just you just show up the next day, you put in the same amount of work, you go a little harder, and it, it's going to play out. You know what I mean? And I think that coming into here is going to open up. But well, it already opened up. We were talking about like a business idea. And then I'm not scared to go into that venture. Yeah. It's just more like figuring it out. Okay, cool. What do I need to do? And it's because of this industry, bro. It's just because... Yeah. I've been used to working for other people for years. Mm -hmm. And then you come here and you're on your own. You're not on your own because I was, I was lucky that the old shop owner took me in, kind of like showed me to put in work. I'm super grateful for that, man. But it's also you, you know. It's also you Let's be real. Work. You yeah. know it's, you're on your own for a little bit because it is your brand that brings your clientele to you. You yeah, know, especially in this kind of. I was talking about to my personal barber as well. Like he bought a, pa a camera, started doing like some of his own like vlogging and like stuff for his haircuts. I'm like, yeah. dude, it's dope. You work for a good place that provides the haircuts or whatever or, or yeah. a shop, but it's also your persona and like what you're doing as well. You know what I mean? Like you're, you know. Yeah, but you don't know that when you're coming in. Yeah. You always. It's just. I mean, you go in when you work a nine to five. You kind of go in knowing like. Someone else is going to give you the work. Right. And you just do whatever they say. Yep. And I was used to it. I worked that for years, you know. And you come in here and you're like, am I even going to cut hair today? Yeah. You know, I don't, have, I don't have clients, you know. And I think the persona, my, I, I talk a lot, bro. You can ask the guys. And I'll say any stupid <laughs> thing. And I think that's why. I, <laughs> no, I can talk about <laughs> aliens, bro. I can talk about. But I think that's what, like, kept me busy, bro, because. I wasn't giving the freshest cuts in the in that shop in the beginning, but I was more booked than half of the barbers. Your there. personality, yeah. Then? yeah, and it's just that, bro. It's like, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie about that, bro. I've been to a couple barbers that I just go get a cut because I fucking like them too. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so I'm not taking away from the profession because obviously you still got to give a good cut, but like 
you definitely got to give that personality, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and build that brand around you as well, right? Yeah. yeah. Which fucking, you know, Los has done fucking great at. And yeah, I think, yeah. you know what I mean? Shout out to fucking Los for that. Yeah. And the best part is that he, he's been teaching me, bro, like, about the importance about posting. Even though sometimes I forget to post, but posting, interacting with your, uh, with whoever follows you, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and it's been working for me. And I'll post. So I was posting Hasbulla a lot for a minute, <laughs> and, <laughs> and I stopped. I stopped posting them, and people would ask me like, "Yo, like, where are the memes?" They follow that yeah. though, right? You don't yeah. think about yeah. it, bro. But it's crazy. Niche, bro. Yeah. yeah, bro. You think about the people you follow, and like them posting shit certain every day, and you don't. So you stop seeing it, and like a day or two later, you're like, "Wait, I haven't seen this." Yeah, you know, yeah. anymore. You know what I mean? Like, whatever hey, it is. You good, bro? Like, what, what's going on? Like, <laughs> yeah, bro. You got hey, COVID? Bro. <laughs> I, no, for example, I follow this girl that posts uh, sunrises every morning, right? And, like, certain days she doesn't post them, like, I kind of notice it, like, what the fuck? What happened? Yeah. You, you, you start getting yeah. sad. Yeah. <laughs> like, the sun never came out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know what's what I mean? So, yeah. You know, bro, definitely. for a minute, I had people sending me pictures of Hasbullah. Post this one. Bro, post this one. That's crazy. Yeah. But, at the end of the day, it like, goes back to branding. Like building a brand, bro. I think it's nowadays is the most important part. Yeah, yeah. Like for sure. be good at your craft, of course, by all means. But because think, that comes first, bro. You can't say it's no. Not yeah, yeah, it's yeah. marketing. We're, we're now in a different world where you definitely got to put that fucking brand. Yeah, you but I mean? but the brand yeah. is it's crucial, and I didn't see it that way. Um, before I wouldn't really post so much on the internet. I was just I don't even know how I got clients, bro. But I was staying busy, and now I'm seeing that by working with him, it's just the importance of, like, just being active, being yeah. reminding people, like, posting a picture would remind so-and-so that, like, oh, I do need to get a haircut. Yep. And you don't think about it because you're like, oh, but that person literally was probably like, oh, do I need a haircut? You know, I have a wedding this weekend. Yeah. The subconscious That's mind, man. Boom. Straight up. That's crazy. I want to ask each and every one of you, though. Yeah. During that time, to those hardships, the ups and downs, what was the main thing that was just like, fuck it. Like, I'm not giving up. I'm going for it. I'm still giving these cuts, whether it's at a house, whether it's at the shop, whether it's wherever. Being broke, give, bro. Give me one thing, each of you. I was scared of being broke. Or like, being broke or like, you know, like, and it happened to me, bro, like, like the hardships. I just, you can ask them. They saw me struggle a lot for a minute where, like, you know, you're working in, you're putting 14 hours a day. And yeah. Like, the bills start piling up, piling up, piling up, and you're, like, you're stressing out. And I think that's, like, what made me, like, like, uh, really, like, not, like not stop. Not you know, you, push you, you have to stay focused. And I had this conversation with the guy that introduced me to the shop. He said, like, if you're not committed to this, like, you're not going to get people. Yep. But the moment you commit, I don't know what it is. The moment you commit, like I feel people understand that you're committed to this and it's people start coming in. Yeah. yeah. And but it was that being broke, bro. And also like being an embarrassment to my parents, bro. Like that's like a big motivation for yeah. me. Damn. Straight up. Yeah, no, for sure, bro. Like <clears throat> there's no other fucking feeling than like than being broke. Than being at the yeah. bottom where you're like I really got to figure this shit out. I, I can't ask anyone else for any more favors. I, I really am at an age now that I got to fucking figure this shit out. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know if everyone's been there. I've been there. You know what yeah. I mean? Where, you know, I'm like, Jesus Christ, I've done all this fucking hard work, but like, I'm still not getting the money that I feel like I deserve. What do I got to fucking do? You know what I mean? So definitely that puts something else in your fucking heart. You know what I mean? Like subconscious of just wanting to grind. You know what I mean? Needing to grind, not wanting to grind. You gotta, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you gotta do it. You know. I think um, I like I like to say that if you anyone you, that knows me, if you were to de like they they were to describe me, they'll be like, "Who's a hustler, grinder?" Like, and I'm I'm proud of that. That's one thing that I learned from my mom, and I inherited it from her, right? And we also honestly we came from like nothing, you know. And I, everything I earned, every, everything that I have, like, I can probably say I earned it. You know, nothing was given to me, you know, not not hating on anyone that, like, their parents were well off, no, you know, none of that, you know. But I'd be, I'd be happy to have that shit, but yeah, I get it. Yeah, I some hope, of us so, sometimes it, I'm yeah. like, I see people and I'm like, that was a 
fucking annoying ass fucking spoiled brat. I hope my kids are like that though, you know? Like I hope they're not assholes, but like I also hope that people think that of them. Like, I mean, it sounds kind of douchey, but like I hope they're in a position where people could even give that opinion about them. Like they're well off. Mm -hmm. Being it like in a good way or hate, whatever. I don't give a fuck. As long as my, my kids are good, like that's something that I hope I can acquire for them, you know, or I can set for them, and you know. They won't even Straight fucking up. have an idea, bro. They yeah, exactly. Have a clue, bro. That's crazy. Yeah. Bro, I, I fucking, <laughs> I, I'm a, we we talk about it now between me and my cousins, and it's funny speaking about it now. Like coming, like holidays are on the corner, right? One of the first things you think about as a Latino is tamales, you know. I used to make tamales with my mom to sell and shit, you know. That's we used crazy. to sell fruit, like. Stuff like there's a lot of stories, like sad stories, bro. Like growing up, I swear. <laughs> that's tight. That's tight, bro. I that I don't really talk about, you know. But I used to be embarrassed about them, but now I'm I'm not anymore. Like now it's a joke, you know. Like, like damn, remember, remember we used to like wake up at five a.m. just to like make tamales, just so we could like have a good dinner, you know. Like yeah. sell tamales so we can pay for the dinner. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like shit like that. And I I used to be embarrassed about stuff like that, but now I'm I'm proud of it because I'm like man like it's like in the past no, you know it like, made you who you are it gave you that yeah. hustle it gave you that twenty five eight yeah exactly never stop working never be comfortable never like, stop grinding. you know me and my mom used to ride our bike <clears throat> this is funny a lot of, if you know me from like middle school you know this story like what is it my mom thank you for sharing it. she. The way she paid for the bills was she would sell fruit. She would ride her bike and, and you know, like, they, now they have vendors in the street. Like, they have a, a whole setup, right? But my mom used to ride around in her, in our, we used to ride on our bikes and I used to help her. Um, she had a little basket in the front and she'll put, like, little cups of, of fruit and she'll, you know, sit down the street. And eventually she, she built out a route and um, she had a clientele, but, like, Waiting for her to Waiting pop for her up. To pop yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, it's like lunchtime. All right, I got to be here at this time, you know? So we'll, we'll ride our bikes over there. And my mom would send me to, like, she, you're a kid. So, like, you know, I feel like people would buy more from a kid, you know? She she would use that card, like, I mean. Smart, you know, I mean, smart it woman. It worked, yeah. you know? And I was I was cool with it. I was like, man, I'm getting tips. Like, <laughs> Hell, yeah. I was making, like, 12 bucks a day. Like, that was, that was, that was lovely, you know? I was, like, I was, like, in fourth grade, I think, fifth grade. And yeah, shit. Uh, those those times were were tough, bro. Like you know, like having to hide from kids from school, like from seeing me because I was embarrassed, you know. Yeah. And do those jobs. Yeah. That's crazy. Man. That's crazy how it comes full circle, though. Now yeah. you're proud of it. Yeah. And that's a testament. That's why whenever to like somebody comes in selling fruit, like I make sure I buy some because I know how that feels, you know. Yep. Yeah. It kind of. It hits something inside. I'm like, yeah. she kind of like no, makes me want to like cry, you know? Yeah, yeah, dog, yeah. sure. I'm fucking good. Fucking <laughs> 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 it's crazy, bro. Yeah, no, like we'll, we'll go out and shit and this guy will see me tipping fucking homeless people and be like, why do you do it? And it's just like, I don't know. It's just something else. You know what I mean? Yeah. I get that. I get that. Yeah. That's just crazy, bro. But yeah, all those, I feel like all those things that I, we went through kind of helped me out now, you know, like I've had nothing. And even like when I moved out and I had a fucking downtown apart LA apartment, like, yeah. you know, when you first move out, like you, like you were saying, like there's, there comes times when you're like broke, you know, one time I had like 20, like, it's funny. I had my rent was 24, 24. That was the total, right? 20, 2400, no, 2,424. Yeah. And then there was a month that I had $24 in my account, bro. And then Sheesh. fucking Kobe passed away. Like, isn't that crazy? Like, 24, 24, right. all over, bro. You're 24. And in my head, I was like, I, I kid you not, this actually happened. I fucking cried when that happened. And I was like, damn, I'm going I'm to be on my Kobe shit from now on, you know? Like, I was motivated because of, not because, like, I wasn't happy that he passed away, but, like, that kind of, like, hit something, you know? And I was like, 
I gotta be on my Kobe shit, mama mentality. The way you, have that is, you know, the way him and I have the whole Nipsey Hustle twenty five. Right, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The twenty five eight marathon. It's a fucking you know you gotta it's a it's a lap, baby. You gotta keep going. You know what I mean? It's ain't a fucking short race. It's a marathon. You know. Exactly. So and enjoy that journey. Yeah. Like people wear those little braces that says, "What would Jesus do?" Right? Like yeah. The, what would Kobe do? What, what would I was like, do? what my head was like, what would Kobe do? You know, like would I, you know, let myself like, you know, fucking crumble and just cry or or am i gonna get myself out of this shit you know yeah. and, and most of it was me getting myself into it you know like partying a lot hanging out with my friends i mean not, nothing against yeah. them you know like they're we my all friends do it. no you know th- i did it to myself you know yeah. i was balling out i was trying to buy this i was trying to impress people and shit yeah you know and i wasn't really making money like i moved out not having a budget worst mistake that's the first thing I, he, he's, he's trying to do that right now. And I was like, make sure you have a budget. Yeah. Something that nobody explained to me, you know, I didn't ask anybody, so can't really blame anyone yeah. either, but yeah. I didn't really and, and have a plan. Know, bro, we, we grew up in a different world too. You know what I mean? Like we didn't, we didn't have people that had as, as much money that we're fortunate to have you yeah. know what I mean? to talk about budgets and credit and shit like that. Like this is all new. You know what I mean? Like, it's definitely fucking new to us, you know. What I mean? Yeah. For sure. Like growing up, people would tell you, save, 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 save. Now, now you know that's the dumbest thing. Like it's better to invest, you know. Yeah. Straight up. If you just have money sitting there, it's like love that. Then I do anything for you, you know. Love that. What about you, my man? What's uh, one thing you took? What was the question again, dog? <laughs> Hit me with that. Real quick. What's uh, you know, going through those ups and downs? What's what's like the main thing that kept, kept you going? going. Um, so I think something I've, I've, I've gotten from, I'm, I'm sure I've gotten it from both my parents. They're both hustlers. Um, I'm super proud of being the, like the hardest working person that I could be. Right. And so once I got into the game, I was like, it's, it's, it's all in. I'm already, I already quit my job. I'm all in on here. I don't have any clientele for me to sustain myself. I know that yeah. much. I have bills. I haven't, I have moved out already. I'm like, well, I mean, even if I wanted to stop, my boy, I can't stop. No, pl- you know? no plan B. <laughs> There's no plan B. There's no. <laughs> Who's paying this shit? No right? check, no see, no cuz. You know, yeah. like I gotta get. I gotta, Landlord I gotta get doesn't it. care if you're sick, yeah, bro. bro. You know, like, <laughs> I, I got, I gotta get it. You know, so um, um, when I got into it, I found my first shop, and um, that shit was just dummy slow, bro. It was so slow. There was no clientele coming in, but they had opened during the pandemic, so they didn't have nothing to start off with. You know, which I respect and I get, um, and, but blessings to the to the owner because he let me cut up you know and he was technically supposed to be closed you know so yeah, i was yeah, like yeah. oh shit i'm gonna take it um and i was just taking whatever i could bro passing out business cards around the shop or just chopping it up with people i see the car wash guy i'm like hey bro let's swap real quick you know yeah um whatever but, i'll hook um, you up you hook me yeah, up. yeah yeah exactly exactly just off the off the strength that maybe he's gonna tell somebody else you right, know exactly um and then um, that wasn't working out bro so then i switched from that shop uh to another shop and um right there there was uh, there was potential you know, there was, there was clients coming in, the door was swinging. And um, I'm like, all right, this is where I'm gonna be at. And so I went through my, my time where it was slow, um, but I was just committed, dog. I was committed, um, I was hungrier than a motherfucker. And that same thing with, pro- with me being like the hardest work I could be, I'm like, it, it's something about it, bro. Like nobody can tell me that I don't, like if, if yeah. you say anything about me, bro, you can't say I'm a yeah. fucking. You can't, you can't say I'm lazy. I'm yeah, yeah, I'm in there. You. you know yeah. I'm in there. Yeah. You know I'm in there. <laughs> Text this guy that you need an appointment at 6 a.m. 5 a.m. He'll be here. Bro. Be, that's dope. Bro. And then, <laughs> and then uh, he'll leave at 9 p.m. that night. 10 p.m. Yeah. Bro, like sometimes I stay with them just. Yeah. And that's one thing you can really pride yourself on that no one can really knock yeah. is your you hustle. Can't take, you can't, you take, can't take, take someone's hustle if, if you. Show talk to your motherfucking hustle. You yeah, can't yeah. say I'm not because yeah. I will be there at fucking whatever time. You know, I'll make shit happen. Whatever it is. Yeah, when this know? guy yeah. showed up to the, the last shop we were working at together, he had no clients, bro. And within a month, bro, he was booked. Oh, every God. day, bro. Yeah. That's tight. From nine AM to ten PM. And we were I would we, between the other barbers, yeah. we would talk, we were just like, How is this guy booked? Yeah, like, what so the fuck? Bad. You know, we don't even get that many walk-ins, bro. Yeah. All his, I still don't know how you got all your clients. <laughs> like, but there he was just booked all the time. It's a secret sauce. <laughs> yeah, right? It was a 
was his only fan. Yeah, <laughs> hey, he was offering some other shit on the subscribe, side, bro. Subscribe, yeah. subscribe. Hey, you get the special after five. Don't worry. Just come in and get a cut. <laughs> Yeah, dog. Um, and that's uh, that's I think that's also one thing like that that um, people come into this game, bro, and it's like, oh, I'm a barber now, bro. Like all of a sudden, like you're you're an entrepreneur, you're yeah. a businessman, cause you're you don't work for nobody else. They forget the hard work, bro. That shit is not that that doesn't come with it, you know. You gotta 100%. put in the work. And um, this 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 game itself, that's another thing that kind of kept me in is, bro. It's 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 taking me through some times, bro. Times where. It was such a blessing for me to be a barber because I knew I couldn't be in that position if I wasn't a barber. Yeah. If I was still in my, my old ways, my old, my old jobs, I could I Bro, could not be affording what I'm doing right honestly, now. Honestly, yeah. we're all in commission only jobs here. Yeah. Right? And I think that's the best fucking thing you can do for yourself. If you're trying to get ahead, commission only jobs 100%. because you are the only reason that you're not making as much money as you want to make. Exactly. Yeah. There's exactly. nothing else. You know exactly. what I mean? It'll and make or break you. Yeah. It'll make or break you because, like, what do you mean I don't have a fucking steady paycheck next week, motherfucker? Go get it. <laughs> oh, well, you got no other choice but to go get it, you know? Just, yeah. Yeah, dog. Um, and so, yeah, yeah, that's 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 what, uh, honestly, kept it going, bro. And then um, I had my son. And um, before my son came, I was doing crazy hours, bro, because I knew that I had to, one, I had to prepare. And then, two, it's like, you're not here yet, but you know, I'm a role model now. Yeah. And yeah. So now let me even go hard in the paint. So that's crazy. It was just it, it was that. perfect timing for me to get into cutting hair, bro. Like perfect, like it couldn't, and I didn't know, but it was the perfect time because the way that my life planned out after I started cutting hair, yeah. it's exactly how it should have been. You know, it's a trip, bro. It's such a trip. Do you think yeah. that? Do you think it happened on accident or was it like destiny or like? Prepara well, honestly, preparation that's, that's meets opportunity, bro. boy. It's a, well, it's, it's a simulation. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but like Tyler said, bro, like preparation meets fucking opportunity. Exactly. You and that saying, that quote it, is so be, true, dog. Be ready, stay ready, so you never got to get ready. Exactly. Shout out Nipsey. Like, yeah. yeah. And that's why, you know what you're saying? Like sometimes you get nervous. I, bro, I get nervous all the motherfucking time. If bro. you're, yeah. that's one thing I, I will say, like if you're ready, like prepared, there's no way you should be nervous. So just think about that. Maybe it'll help you in the nah, future. You're right, bro. You're right. It, the only times that in front of a camera, like the only time, who's looking at me right now? <laughs> you know what I mean? Think about a time, like what's the most common? We, we all went through it. We're all men. Like when you were n nervous about something, talking to women. Oh, yeah. right. That first, that first nut. No, I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, come on. No, I'm man. not talking about smashing. <laughs> I'm talking about like speaking oh. speaking to a woman, whether it's like you know. Yeah. Whether it was on MySpace or like in, at school or at the movies, I'm talking, you know, like high school, right? Yeah. First time. The first time it was like, it was like you were talking about it, like eight mile. You you walk up and you, you can't say you don't say anything. You, you freeze, right? Yeah. Damn, I'm trying to. Think. Yeah. And you first you figure it out. That. You figure it out though. You figure it out. We all go through it, right? Hell so yeah. like, once once you're prepared, you know, like you know what women like. You, you just want they want to laugh, want to have a good time, you know. Sometimes Poppy lows, so, Poppy so, lows. So, <laughs> sometimes they want to get made fun of. That shit works too, you know. Or they, they want to eat some good. Or maybe give them some French fries. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, throw my little Louis bag, you know. <laughs> nah, I'm playing with you. Lowe's really knows God. <laughs> damn. <laughs> nah, tell me, tell me. Nah, I'm, play, I'm playing. But people, people do do that. For but. Sure. Once you're prepared, you're, you're not really nervous, you know? Yeah. Or, like, if you don't put the pressure on you to, like, take a woman home and sleep with her just to have a good time, I think that's good prep, like, preparation. The nervousness kind of just... Yeah, like, like, you don't have... You don't have right there's no here. pressure on you, you know? Imagine, imagine you're, like, a rookie on, on a team. Nobody expects you to be exactly. Tom Brady, you know, like, yeah. level of, of quarterback. But if you do really good, you, you look like fucking genius you know what i'm saying like so what do you, what do you think is just not putting up. that much pressure on yourself don't put pressure on yourself but also like be prepared like whatever because you know you have to prepare you have to put pressure on yourself yeah you know what i mean um but but you're saying be prepared be prepared like mentally i think that is gonna like help you more than actually like physically you know being and I think that you might know? be the bigger thing. Just being prepared fucking, you know, mentally for it, for sure. I think you should not, you should also not put um, more pressure than you already have. You know what I mean? 
that's when you'll break yourself down. Yeah. Yep. And, and honestly, just, I think that's one of my biggest faults. I'm not even going to bullshit, man. I put so much pressure on myself yeah. that no one's a bigger critic than my motherfucking self. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they'll break you, bro. You get stuck in your head. and yeah. Yeah. It's hard to get out, like, out of your head sometimes. And that pressure that, you know, like, oh, I have to get laid or... Yeah. You know, I have to. No, uh, I'm not even talking about the woman. Well, I'm, but I'm talking but about like just, what yeah, we were talking yeah, about, yeah. you know, it's just work and just you know, it makes you, it makes you, it makes everything weird. Yeah. I just gave that example because we're all men here, yeah. and we all went through that, and that was like the easy example, you know. Because yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. who knows? Maybe one of us is not really been thrown out to like do some business or whatever, you know, like other situations. But that yeah. is easy to common ground. To. Yeah. yeah, easy yeah, relation, sure. you know, yeah, for sure. Um. But yeah. Yeah, fuck yeah, man. Well, shit, man. Well, what's next, bro? You're talking about fucking uh, Chris Ballet number two? You want to just spill all the secrets? <laughs> uh, <laughs> nah, Let honestly, me like, some, some. <laughs> I've, that's one thing that, that's another, not one thing. I really talked about a lot of things already. That's an, another thing that I love about my job or that I appreciate is the people that I've, met throughout the years you know like it's crazy like how many people are, like business people people that gamble people Bro, that i know you can name like, drop i know you can name drop if you really wanted to be like i've cut this motherfucker's hair i still cut this motherfucker's hair yeah shit like that so yeah billionaires sure. millionaires you know hedge funds people that control <laughs> like hedge funds like a lot of shit I, and, and the biggest thing i take is like the, like information i ask a lot of questions you know yeah that's a good way to make a haircut go by quicker. It's like ask people questions. Don't ask them like, "What are you doing this weekend?" Like, no, yeah. I, I inquisitive I ask, questions. I ask people that when I don't really give a fuck. Like, if I'm tired and I just want to get, I want to get on this weekend, bro. Yeah. So you know, oh, if you get cut up and you're, I gotta meet and up your barber asks yeah, you what I you're cool. doing this weekend. I, I don't know if this has happened to them, but there's been times where I, let's say, sit in my chair and I'm tired and it's the last client Saturday. What's up, bro? What are, you, what are you doing this weekend? They start telling me, and I just zone out, and I'm just like, <laughs> You're just like and then I run out of shit to oh, ask. Oh yeah, and, oh yeah. And I ask them again. So what are you doing this weekend? Remember I said, oh yeah, my man. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, that sounds, sounds dope, fun. bro. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or or that or that meme with the alien. He's like, you're you're so when you're so high. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. You ever see the over, there's an alien? He looks high as fuck. And he's oh, like, with the big with the big head. Yeah, he's like. When you're so high and your friend tells you a crazy story, and all you can say is, damn, that's crazy. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, Bro, when you're that tired, you, just, you, yeah. you be doing shit like you're that. Oh, yeah, like, damn, that's crazy. My, my dog just died, damn, that's crazy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> damn, that's cool. Cool story, yeah. Cool story. I well, I want to ask, though, before we get out of here, because um, now you've came into, like, you're doing it on your own. Yeah. You know, kind of all you at the same time uh doing all that now that you're in the position that you're in owner of the shop kind of mentor to these two along with others how has that transitioned mentally for you and like where you see yourself moving forward um that is pressure that i will say i'm starting to put on myself because the whole concept of the shop was like I want to be a barbershop, but also be a, like a hub for people to like create something for themselves, yeah. you know? And I need to honor that because that, that was my game plan coming in. And like me and Paco were talking about something. I was like, bro, let's do it. Like that's, we, we found something that we both want to do. And I was like, why not? Hell yeah. You know, I don't have, the, we don't, I don't know if necessarily we have the funds for it yet, but the idea is there. And that's the, the initial intent is already there. So now it's just like bringing it into fruition, you know? Yeah. I, we, Kind of, all, I want to say we have a name for it already. Like, we have an idea. I have the resources. And I don't have all the time, but he has a little bit more time now. He might have a little bit more time than I do. So he could put in that equity right. towards that business, you know. But I definitely want to. <clears throat> this is year one of five. So in the next four years, I'm going to open a second location. I'm going to open, well, I could just say, like, I'm opening a restaurant. I'm going to open a coffee shop. And I also have, like, building a brand. Like, I'm doing drops every two months. You know, it's just going really well. 
I would like to say. That's um, f- like clothing for the shop, you know. For all that shit, bro. I, I definitely got to go walk out here with some and hats, furniture, yeah. Yeah. you know. And then eventually, I want to transition into like real estate, you know? like any any other adult, you know. But I'm giving myself five years, like to start yeah. tapping yeah. into those different mm-hmm. kinds of yeah. That's cool, man. And I like to s- I would like to say that everything I've ever told myself I was gonna do, I've done it. Yeah. There's not one thing. There was one year. That everybody has a vision board. I have a mental vision board every year, and like this year, I completed it in ten months. Sometimes it takes me thirteen months. I go the year, the, the year. following year starts, and I, I haven't finished it, you know. But I, I try to finish it. You know, there, there's some that that are out of my hands. Like I, there's nothing I could do. Like like one year, I was like, it would be cool if I could get. I had like the resource, not the resource, but like. The connections to this person, I was like, it would be cool if I could bring them to my studio, right? And the last thing on my vision board was to have Mac Miller come into my personal studio. I was cutting up his homie, and then he passed away. And I was like, damn, the one thing on my vision board. Yeah. Like, I never missed. That's the one thing that I could say. Peace, that pass, 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 yeah, rest in peace, Mac Miller. But <clears throat> that's the one thing on my vision board that I wasn't able to complete, you know? And I was like, damn. That shit hurt, but it's like yeah. it's out of my reach. Like right. there's nothing I could do about that, you know. <clears throat> but anything that is, in, I'm in a position to complete. I'm gonna make sure I do it, you know. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. I, I think the biggest thing, like what you said, is like creating that hub for other people to create as well. You know what I mean? It's like you being there, done that. You definitely want to provide that platform, that base for other people to fucking do cool shit too. You know what I mean? Because like you're one person, but the people you're, you're, you're that's your team can have all kinds of other shit that you, you didn't even think about and can bring certain ideas and shit into fruition as well. Right. So that's dope, man. Yeah. yeah, I definitely want to open doors for people that, like, they don't even know they can open themselves and things that we can collab on that I probably couldn't do on my own, by myself anyway, you know? So why wouldn't I spread the knowledge and the love, like, you know? And, and it's like, like, you have an idea, I have an idea, let's bring it together. I'm, I can't do it on my own because I don't have all the time in the world. You know, you you're busy too, but like, you know, two's like better than one. yeah, two's better than one, and yeah. we could make it work. You know, and then if once not if when that that shit happens, and it's like prosperous, like, like it's it's going well, like then I can move on to the next thing. You know, yep. but I I definitely don't want to be that person that's just like I want to do all this stuff and and then. Yeah. And then don't do good in, at any of it, you know? So I'm like, you know, that's why I give myself, like, you know. Awesome. Yeah. Those timelines. Yeah. Timelines. Yeah. Well, we appreciate it, my guys. But fuck thank you, yeah. thank you. Oh, yeah. Paco, Danny, De La Soul, Crisp, <laughs> Los, my dog. Uh, you know, thank you for having us, homie. I appreciate you guys. The fucking love. Uh, you know, it's been a fucking cool time. But I uh, wish you guys the fucking best. You know, you two guys on this chair as well, you know. And uh, Chris, thank you for providing this fucking platform for all of us to fucking just tap into. So let's Hell keep yeah. on getting in, bro. Good luck to yeah. all three of you on your fucking future goals, your endeavors, all that shit that's coming to you guys. You guys are going to do great fucking things. Um, again, I, we appreciate you guys, man. From the bottom thank, you, thank, thank you. Likewise. Thank you guys. Yeah. Thanks for pulling up, bro. Yeah, for sure. We appreciate sure. you. Hell all right, brother. All right. Stuff.